All right, Saga, what are you looking at? Well, I've had this one in my pocket for some time now, but of course the Trump raid kind of shadowed over everything. I th still think it's worth spending a lot of time on and actually parsing fact from fiction. By now, you may have heard that the new so-called Inflation Reduction Act partially paid for its spending by spending billions of dollars on IRS enforcement and specifically hiring 87,000 new IRS agents. The GOP has been made a lot of the hiring of these new tax agents since the bill's passage, noting that it will dramatically increase the number of audits of working class people that those audits will inevitably, of course, touch the working poor. Democrats counter that by saying that, in fact, the point of the funding the IRS was to make sure that higher-income households who are not paying their taxes will instead face all of the scrutiny. Now, part of the reason why historical basis tells us that increasing IRS tax enforcement almost always is a winner for the U.S. government treasury is that it returns many multiples in dollars invested historically by recovering unpaid taxes from the current system. Now, to start with, I want to say that while I think a lot of the GOP rhetoric today is not grounded in genuine concern, they are not wrong about the fundamentals. This has been a personal crusade of mine for years to highlight the fact that Americans who make less than $25,000 a year are audited five times more than any other income group in the United States, and that often Congress seeks to rip money from the hands of working poor by penalizing small businessmen or tradesmen who use payments apps like Venmo to force compliance rather than to close the carried interest loophole or the step-up basis. And if you look at this bill, that story is still present. Kirsten Cinema insisted on shutting down even a small effort to extend the carried interest loophole, which literally only helps multimillionaires in the private equity industry, and even went to ensure that they got a tax advantage in the bill. She did not object, however, to new IRS agents. And this brings us further into the facts. Why are working poor more likely to get audited in the first place? It depends on who you ask. Democrats and the IRS themselves say it's because the GOP has for nearly a decade underfunded the IRS. The national taxpayer advocate Aaron Collins wrote in a 2021 report that the budget cuts and more duties foisted on the IRS during the pandemic have created a disaster situation where the IRS is nearly unresponsive to asks from tens of millions of Americans. Thus, they rely on so-called easy audits and automatically generated ones, which are disproportionately against the working poor while not targeting the richest Americans. Furthermore, they actually point to the fact that bringing an audit against billionaires or multimillionaires who are far more likely to actually cheat on their taxes is no small feat. Such individuals have legions of lawyers and accountants who can cost the IRS millions of dollars in legal fees should they decide to bring an audit. Thus, the Democratic justification for funding the IRS specifically is to give them the resources to do so. If you look into the details, there is some justification for this. The current IRS is made up of approximately 100,000 individuals. Approximately 50% of them, according to IRS data themselves, are scheduled for retirement eligibility in the next five years. Thus, the figure of the 87,000 tax agents that you've heard about is spread across 10 years and is meant, according to the IRS, as a way to backfill retirements. Now, on to the audit question specifically is where things get very dicey. House leader Kevin McCarthy noted recently, as I just showed you, that if you make less than $75,000 or less, there will be approximately 750,000 new audits as a result of the bill. That is basically derivative of a lot of GOP messaging, which is that this new legion of IRS agents will intrude on the lives of Americans and ruin specifically the working poor. Once again, I have deep sympathy for this idea because that is literally what the IRS has been doing now for years. But let's look very closely at the facts too. Democrats have promised that the new IRS funding will not target anyone making less than $400,000 per year, citing the correct data that the audit rate for people reporting higher than $10 billion has plunged from 21% to 3% in the last 10 years, and that further data that audit rate generally has shown a plunge of nearly 20% for most Americans while actually increasing on the working poor. However, and this is where it's important to note the specific details, all of this is based purely upon the word of the IRS. It is not in the law. IRS Commissioner Charles Rettig, he wrote a letter to Congress seeking to allay GOP concerns. He said, quote, it is absolutely not going to increase audits on those making less than $400,000 a year or on small business owners. Rettig cited the so-called Green Book, which is published by the U.S. Department of Treasury and it outlines their policy. Furthermore, Rettig's statement is also important to parse. His quote said households making less than $400,000, but the actual quote from the Treasury Green Book is, quote, the proposal would direct that additional resources go toward enforcement against those with the highest incomes rather than Americans with actual income of less than 400000 
actual income figure means that the IRS is giving itself significant leeway to audit anyone that it suspects is hiding income and makes a so-called actual income of less than 400,000. In fact, the Congressional Budget Office, which is supposedly nonpartisan, at least, agrees saying that at least $20 billion will be raised from audits on those who are lower to middle income. Now, to be fair, that is not what the majority of the bill is supposed to raise. But the claim that no money and no audits will be targeted towards those under 400K and specifically towards the working poor does not, in fact, seem to be true. So that is where I have landed after reviewing everything for myself. The doomsday scenario being painted is not true. But the promises of only targeting the rich are not true either. And in general, I think that we are at a point where the IRS and the Treasury Department don't deserve a lot of our trust after they have now targeted the working poor for nearly a decade. Simply because they pinky promised us something does not mean that we should just take their word for it. And that is where, with the final word, I have to blame some Democrats. Senator Mike Crapo of Idaho, during the voting process on the bill, actually offered an amendment which would have forced the IRS to actually promise this under 400K stip st uh, stipulation into the law. Now, Senate Democrats voted against it on a party line vote because it would have cost approximately $20 billion in raised revenue, which they needed to pay for the rest of the bill. That single clause may open the IRS and any future administration to use these resources to target any income group that they want. That is not acceptable with the trust deficit that we have in our society. And if, frankly, if the Dems know what's good for them politically, they would close that loophole and pass similar text immediately. Republicans, by the way, are already on record supporting it. It should be a very easy vote and an easy fix. If they don't, it will also tell us, and everybody who votes against this deserves to be punished at the ballot box for the consequences. So that's where I ended up, Crystal. It took a lot of digging. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.